So today I'll be talking about how to remember the radians in a unit circle. Here we just have a uh, recreation of the unit circle, of course, without the degrees because today we'll be talking radians. The first thing to get out of the way are these, I guess you could call them like straight lines, but they're your 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. I don't really have a method, per se, of keeping these in memory because they're pretty intuitive. You just have your zero and your half whole, and then add another half. Just keep adding a half, basically. And you can visualize a graph to get your ordered pair. Now, the other radians are more difficult. Now, I like to remember that these ones here, the ones closer to this horizontal, pretty much center, are going to have six on the denominator. And when you have six on the denominator, you always have the square root of 3 over 2 in front, in the first for your x value, your cosine, and then you have 1 half, some variant of 1 half. That could be 1 half or opposite of 1 half. Same goes for the cosine value, but that's for your sine. And it just keeps uh, going to your denominator for 4. That Those will always be in the middle. And then your denominator of 3 will be at the highest in this middle section. <laughs> Obviously, uh, your negatives, your opposites, just do that based on the quadrants. But the numerators, I think, they seem the most random. But if you really think about it, it follows a, uh, a certain order. We have, for our first quadrant, just all ones. They're uh, the smallest fractions. But as you go farther, you'll see here, this is a 2 thirds pi. That's one less than your denominator. Two is le one less than three. This is also one less than your denominator. And your numerator here is also one less than your denominator. And then for your third quadrant, where uh, both x and y in the ordered pair are negative, it, uh, well, it kind of goes the opposite way. You have one more than the no denominator in your numerator, seven sixths pi. And then one more for the uh, square root of 2 over 2 radian. And then you have 4 over third 3 pi, which is, again, one more than the denominator. And then for your last quadrant, your fourth quadrant, there is still a pattern. And it's just like you double the denominator. 3 times 2 is 6, and then you subtract 1. So that's how you get 5. 4 times 2 is 8, and then you get 7 by getting rid of 1. 6 times 2 is 12, minus 1 is 11. And that's just how I like to keep this kind of method in your head, so you can fill it out for tests and such. Another cool little thing to note is that pi over 3 is just uh, pi over 6 doubled. And it keeps going like this. This is a 4 sixths pi, same thing, simplify the fraction. <laughs> and it just keeps going around. You don't need to know that, but I just uh, explain some of the seeming randomness here.